Ben Woodruff here with another falconer video. Today's video uh, I'm going to be talking about whether or not raptors are cannibals. Uh, it's actually a more interesting subject uh, because I'm going to go into some uh, actual other discussion topics about it. So what happened was, why I'm even making this, just kind of sharing some thoughts I have, is I did a video the other day on how to properly butcher a game bird to feed a bird of prey, to feed a raptor. And I demonstrated we uh, usually in the falconry, in the uh, wildlife rehabilitation, and veterinarians, and zoos, uh, a lot of times to feed raptors, and also things like big cats, we will buy frozen captive bred Japanese quail. It's a very nutritious food source. So I did a video showing how to cut it up, and I didn't think anything of it. And a lot of people made comments kind of like, oh, well, wait a minute, I guess technically, uh, does that make birds of prey cannibals? And it's actually a very good topic, and I'll tell you why. Here's what's fascinating. When you start to study us, the psychology of humans and animals, from a genetic point of view, you have kinship loyalty genetics, which the more actual genes that are shared with you, the more you recognize certain things and feel a sense of compassion towards certain things. It can usually be like, usually a person would look to, would just instinctively wanna help a family member in need versus a total stranger. And uh, same thing, the more closely related you are to an, another animal, the more, literally, the more genes you share with that species, the more easy it is to see like, oh, hey, that's mean that that person is being cruel to that dog. Meanwhile, if somebody's yelling at a fish or hitting a fish with a stick, there's fewer genes shared. And, and I know it's, it's a very strange concept. So we recognize certain things in that way, right? Uh, I'll never forget, I tell the story time and time again, but there was a time when uh, I, was, I was hiking, looking up for goshawk nest. There's this old lady hiking in front of me and she saw a, a man catch a fish, pulling it out of the water. And she looks at him, she's like, oh, good catch, great. And he's like, hey. And then she walks a little further and she sees a bow hunter who had been unsuccessful, had been in a tree stand all day and they're walking down in full camo with a bow. And she looks at him and she's like, I think it's terrible that you would ever harm an animal. And he's like, oh, I'm a hunter, that's what I, you know. And I'm like, you just walked past a guy who had a hook in a fish's mouth that was gasping for air. But it's easier to recognize a cute, fluffy deer as something like, oh, you know, if it's harmed in any way, that that, it, that strikes a chord more easily with many people than it does thinking of a fish. And it's easier to think of a fish than it is to think of an insect, and easier to think of an insect than it is a clump of moss, right? Knowing that, uh, we are mammals. And so as such, we recognize the differences in other mammals. Um, Birds, not so much. We're not as closely related to birds. Birds are a branch off of the dinosaur line. They're much further, uh, they share fewer genes with us. And as such, it's really interesting. My whole life, people would, as growing up, I was a falconer and, and fellow humans would be like, oh, you're, you, you keep falcons, huh? You're really into birds? And I'm like, N no, I mean, I do like birds, but I'm not into birds, I'm into raptors. That's like going up to somebody who has a dog and saying, hey, you got, you, got, you got a dog, huh? You're really into mammals? It's the same thing. Taxonomically saying a person is into birds is the same thing as a person with a dog telling them that they're into mammals. So knowing that, sometimes there's things we don't see. Humans are less prone to notice the difference of different groups and different taxons of birds from each other. And so that is a question I get asked quite a lot. If I'm using a peregrine falcon to hunt a duck, well, that's a bird hunting a bird. Isn't that cannibalism? Or I'm feeding a red, you know, feeding a Harris hawk a quail or a starling, uh, is that cannibalism? The answer is no. So cannibalism is typically defined as your same species or even your same people. Uh, if you wanna go even more so, your own in group, but not always, but it's you are hunting your same species. So if a peregrine falcon were to eat a peregrine falcon, that would indeed be cannibalism. And maybe it's easy, and if a, if a peregrine falcon is, or if, let's say a goshawk is eating a pheasant, that's not cannibalism. They're two different birds, but they're two wildly different species, so it's not cannibalism. And by the same token, let's flip it. If you had a cougar, a mountain lion, and it hunted a deer, it's a mammal hunting a mammal. 
Um, if you had a lion and it was hunting a zebra or, or a wildebeest or something, it's a mammal hunting a mammal, but it's not cannibalism. It's the same kind of thinking. So be aware of that. It's fascinating to actually ponder the fact that um, humans, the, 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 the baseline genetic human psychology that we view of birds is we lump them all together and they're diverse. You think about the difference between an ostrich and a hummingbird and a penguin. It's like, good heavens, they operate entirely different from, from fl flying upside down and backwards of a hummingbird to an ostrich can't fly and an ostrich still has claws on its wings that are as some of them are as long as grizzly bear claws. I'm like, that's quite a bit different than a hummingbird, yet they're both birds. Yeah, same thing, there's a big difference between a whale and a dog. So mammals are diverse as well. So I wanted to share this because people brought up this valid point, this valid question. I wanted to address it because I think it's kind of a fun one. Just thought I'd share my thoughts. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe. Let me know your thoughts and comments and questions down below. And as always, happy hawking.